So while we are speaking about the importance of an arbitration agreement or an arbitration clause, an arbitration clause can itself be embodied in a main contract or it can be in a form of a separate agreement altogether. Now what should an arbitration agreement or the clause contain to cut out the delay or any kind of confusion or then frequently giving access to the parties to rush to court? Firstly, it should contain clear language as far as the appointment of arbitrators is concerned, the mode of appointment. By that, I mean the number of arbitrators. It can be either a sole arbitrator or any number of uneven number of uh, arbitrators. The choice belongs to the parties because as far as arbitration is concerned, I would like to stress upon for all my young students is that complete party autonomy is there. That's one of the highlights of an arbitration agreement. Then we move on to the language of the arbitration, language the parties prefer the arbitration should be uh, conducted in. And the most vital part of an arbitration agreement is the seat of arbitration. Now, while we are on the part of seat of arbitration, I will be touching upon the concept of seat, venue and place in the latter part of this uh, lecture. But uh, please bear in mind that you should and should clearly mention the seat of arbitration and by seat I do not mean venue a lot of times seat and venue are uh, confused or uh, taken to be the same uh, part but venue is only the place where arbitration is going to be conducted whereas a seat is the center of gravity of an arbitration. So what we've seen is that an importance of an arbitration agreement is one that it should be clear it should encapsulate the intent of the parties. Secondly, it should specify the language of the arbitration. Thirdly, it should mention the uh, seat, mode of appointment of arbitrators and the number of arbitrators. It would be helpful for all of you that before you all draft a particular clause of arbitration to generally see there are model clauses available for uh, arbitration the arbitration clauses are model clauses are available on the institution's website be it the LCI, CIAC all of them have their model clauses we at our end generally for uh, your assistance have come up with a model clause which uh, captures almost all the uh, criteria that I have just mentioned in this uh, class so I would read out a model clause for the benefit of all of you so this is a model arbitration uh, clause this is how it normally should read to avoid confusion and delay like I said. Any dispute arising out of or in connection with this contract including any question regarding its existence, validity or termination shall be referred to and finally resolved by arbitration under dash rules. Now you can name the institution over here that under the rules of LCI, CAC, ICC etc. Now we will pause on this part. What does this part achieve now? I will repeat again, any dispute arising out of or in connection with this contract including any question regarding its existence. So here we are defining as to what disputes will be submitted by the parties to arbitration. Now what are these disputes? Any question regarding the existence of the agreement, validity or termination of that particular contract in which this arbitration agreement is there will be finally resolved by arbitration. So purpose number one is achieved about specifying what disputes will be submitted. Purpose number two is the arbitration rules by which the particular arbitration proceedings will be governed. Either it's LCI, CAC, ICC or the Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996 which is mostly referred to as the ad hoc set of arbitration. Moving on to part number two, the other important facet, the number of arbitrators shall be Either you can appoint a sole arbitrator or in many cases like we see there are three arbitrators. Like I said in the beginning, it has to be an uneven number to be appointed mutually by the parties in case of a sole arbitrator or in case of a three member tribunal whereby each party shall nominate an arbitrator and the two arbitrators so appointed shall appoint a third arbitrator who shall be the presiding arbitrator. So either you appoint a sole arbitrator specified or you say that the parties or the arbitral tribunal will consist of three arbitrators. In that case, what happens? One arbitrator is appointed by party A, the other arbitrator is appointed by party 2 and the two arbitrators then appoint the third arbitrator. One more angle covered, the number of arbitrators will be specified. Then the most 
vital part is the seat. So we have to state the seat or legal place of arbitration should be or shall be London, Mumbai, etc. depending upon the parties. The language of the arbitration, in this case it is English, the governing law of the contract shall as set out in clause so and so of the agreement. So the governing law should be set out in another part of the agreement as well. So this is how a model clause of an arbitration is normally worded. It sets out the rules, it sets out what disputes are to be submitted, it sets out the number of arbitrators, it's clear in reading, always keep your arbitration agreement or clause simple. Easy to understand, not too complicated, very clear, capturing the intent of parties, if I may repeat myself, and also the governing law as well as the language of arbitration. To summarize this part as far as an arbitration agreement is concerned, I would say an arbitration agreement is an agreement by which parties decide to submit their disputes to arbitration. And like I said, the important facets of an arbitration agreement is that it should be a written agreement. Intention of the parties uh, should be clear. Now, when I say it is, it should be written, it can be in the form of an email, it can be in the form of a telefax, it can be in letters exchanged by the uh, parties. The intent should be clear that the parties always thought and believe that if ever a dispute arises, it should be submitted to arbitration.